Hello, and welcome to another Maine SBDC webinar. My name is Kelsey Reardon, and I'm with the state team hosted at the Portland University of Southern Maine campus. Um, and we have some special guests today for our buying media uh, advertising webinar. So we have Maine SBDC business advisor, Chris Cole, and her sister, Eileen Cole, mm -hmm. who's coming with lots of experience with, in media. Uh, sounds like she's been in many different locations covering this. And so she's going to be able to offer you some advice. Um, she's not located in Maine, but we have many participants from different places. So we'll be talking about general ideas. And if you have any specific questions, we can look into that afterwards. Any questions you have today can go in the chat below. I saw it pop up before. Someone said hi to Chris. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know maybe where you're located um, and what it is you would like to advertise. So what is your business based in? Um, if you have any questions along the way, put them in there, but we'll definitely have time at the end for a Q&A session. So if we don't answer it, we'll get to it at the end or we'll look for some answers afterwards. Great. I see people introducing themselves. Welcome. Um, I'll be sending a follow-up email this afternoon that will include a link to the recording of today's session as well as the slides. So any uh, resources that we mentioned will be included in there. Um, if you have any questions after the fact, you can respond to any of my emails and they will end up in the same place. So if something pops up later, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I'm going to pass it over to Chris, who will introduce us and get us started. Thanks, Kelsey. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really pleased this was a few months in the making because uh, my sister is busy, as you can imagine. Um, she's currently the uh, sales manager for a CBS, an ABC, and a Fox affiliate in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, that's the Western Mass News Group. She's been in television uh, sales for over 21 years, almost 22 years now. And um, she has experience everywhere. She started out in Portland, actually, at our, our CBS, Channel 13, um, and then from there moved to Tallahassee, Florida, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia. Um, I noticed she didn't put Iowa in her bio here, but she was in Iowa, too, for a while. Um, but she's been with Western Mass News for the last four years. Um, and prior to doing television, she grew up, we grew up in a household where our father um, had a commercial, a consumer trade show business. He did concerts and all kinds of things. He also owned radio stations. Um, so selling is kind of in the genes, so to speak. And um, she'd like to say that her biggest accomplishment, which is true, and I'm very proud of her. She has three grown sons and all of them are Eagle Scouts. And I know that's due in part, big part to um, my sister's uh, instrumental, pushing them along the way. So without further ado, I'll introduce my sister, Eileen. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And I appreciate this opportunity to give you an overview about media and, you know, some of the things that you might um, need to understand about the differences. And, you know, my, my first slide, this is something I found on the internet. Um, you know, so I'm going to try to talk about all of those with the exception of magazines. We really don't have many magazines in New England that um, sell advertising. So although the company I worked for at one time did sell um, magazine advertising. So that's a question afterwards. We can talk about that. So the first form of media is um, broadcast television. Sorry, uh, this, for some reason it's not moving. We always say technology is great when it works. Uh, when it works, yeah. Sometimes at the beginning of the slideshows, it just is, you know, it's early still. It's getting warmed up. And... Getting warmed up. It's Thursday. It's thinking it's ready for Friday. Right. We've all, you know, we've all been there. Uh, Give me so. a second here. I'm going to go back. Huh. That's right. These things happen. We've got a couple okay. people joining there. on the call now. Can you see it, Kelsey? It is, you're not sharing your screen anymore. Okay, hold on a second. Let me go. But I apologize. That's all right. We understand these okay. things happen. We have a couple 
people who just joined in. So welcome to our buying media advertising webinar. Um, okay. We are working through some tech issues. Okay. It, so go ahead. The first, the first form of um, advertising is broadcast television and it's um, broadcast television is the most common form of television in the United States. Um, broadcast television uses public airwaves, transmit programs. Um, you know, if you have a TV set, you can receive all of the over the air channels. They're free and over the air, no cost to the viewer for the most part. Um, Broadcast television is regulated by the Federal Communications Commission. Um, you know, we're licensed in the public interest. So that's the reason that you'll see news programs and other things and community involvement by TV stations because that's part of our license. So when it comes to television advertising. Uh, sorry, I don't know what's going on with this. Let me just go back here. We're all continuing to learn in this ever evolving digital hybrid world. How That's right. Say all of this information. Honestly, it's not a week goes by in a sales meeting that something like this doesn't happen. So. so I'm sorry that it can't be in presenter mode, but it doesn't seem to be working in that. So I will... Okay. Skip okay. down to the next one. There we go. So, Can you see the next one? Yeah, it looks yep. good. Now. Okay. Looks good. Thanks, Chris. Okay. So commercials are sold during programs that air throughout the day. Commercial lengths vary between 10 and 60 seconds. And prices depend, you know, vary depending on the time of day and the length of the commercial. Um, we like to say that commercials provide sight and sound and motion that drives the emotion um, to take action by the viewer. Now rates vary and sometimes people hear Super Bowl rates, okay? Like this year, Fox has a Super Bowl and last in 2022, the rate for a Super Bowl commercial was $6.9 million, which equated to about $233,000 per second for a 30 second ad. Um, so people look at that and they say, oh my goodness, I can't afford TV. Well, that's a national commercial that's being shown in every TV set in the United States. When it comes to your local TV stations, commercials are very affordable because different programs, different times of the day, so different costs. And I always recommend that people check out television advertising. You know, our, our station has advertising packages that start as low as $800 a month for advertising. So that's just something to know. So the next one is radio. And you know, that's sound waves obviously, transmits music and news and entertainment. Um, you know, interesting thing, that's also regu regulated by the FCC. Um, you might've heard George Carlin's um, Seven Dirty Words um, because the FCC says no obscene and decent or profane content on either radio or television. So that's why you won't see very many risque shows or programs on either medium. And then if you go down to the next one about how radio works and radio advertising. So commercials are sold during the day, kind of in a similar way to the way television is sold. Um, various time periods, commercials are usually 30 to 60 seconds in length. Um, radio tends to sell a little differently. They sell a special segment every day called drive time. And that's in the morning and the evening. And it's usually when people are driving to and from work, hence the name drive time. Um, it's usually the most expensive time. During the day, commercials tend to be less expensive. At the nighttime, again, less expensive. One of the things that differentiates radio from TV is that radio stations offer endorsements and remotes for sale to advertisers. So sometimes you'll hear a radio host talking about their success with weight loss or a certain um, hair product or something like that. They're being paid by an advertiser to talk about it and the station's getting compensation. So that's something they can do because they're not journalist, whereas on television stations, you know, your anchors are not talking about where they get their hair done 
or what weight loss they've recently experienced because that would take away from their credibility. Um, and radio is considered theater of the mind because there's no pictures. So you just kind of have to imagine it. One of the disadvantages of radio is if your commercial plays while someone's driving in a car, we hope that they're not gonna write it down or look at the phone and try to go to your website. So that could be a disadvantage, um, but it's a great medium, it's cost-effective and radio stations you know, have very affordable packages for advertising. And because they hit different genres with their different types of product, you know, adult contemporary country, news, talk, you can buy advertising in just about any one of those silos to reach your key audience. So then the next thing we're going to talk about is cable. So it generally, you know, comes through um, cables, and that's why they call it cable television. Um, it really boomed after um, the Gulf War um, because, you know, CNN broadcast the Gulf War continuously. People tuned in. As a result of that, cable realized they had an audience and then began to add channels and sell advertising where typically they hadn't because it's subscription. And so people pay to get that service in their home. So how cable advertising works. So these commercials are similarly sold as television and radio, 30 and 60 second lengths, um, but it's usually sold in demographic or geographic locations known as head-ins. Um, because of that, you know, you can target a specific neighborhood, a specific town, um, a specific area. Whereas when you use either radio or television, you're broadcasting to multiple people and it's not as targeted, um, but because they have so many different channels to sell, like, um, you know, a lot of cable companies offer up to 185 channels. So. It's everything from, you know, the Food Network and HGTV um, to some very obscure channels, but they may interest people, you know, Golf Channel or the Football Channel or the Turner Classic Movie Channel, all of these different channels. And because they have so much to sell, they typically bundle multiple channels and sell it as a run of schedule. And in order to get into specific time periods, you have to pay a different rate. So, you know, again, pro and con, um, but it can be effective if you wanna reach a, you know, a small geographic region. If your business is such that your trading area is within 10 miles and you're really not prepared to go outside of that trading area to service clients, cable can be very effective for you, so. Now the next one is gaining a lot of interest these days, and that's the OTT digital. And so, you know, some people have heard of it, some people haven't, so I always explain it. It's OTT stands for over the top, and it refers to any streaming service that delivers content over the internet. That's the reason they call it over the top. Um, so, you know, it does come through your smart TV. And if you don't have a smart TV, you can get a Roku device, you know, or a Fire Stick or an Apple, and they have apps on those. You can advance to the next slide. And on those apps, um, you can buy advertising. And these commercials are sold in 15 and 30 second lengths. And the reason for that is because you don't, you know, there's, that content is usually um, a longer form content and you don't want people to click away from it. So that's why they try to intersperse it with 15 or 30 seconds in length. And these can be served to the viewer based on demographic, geographic and qualitative data. Um, and they're sold on a cost per thousand basis. And so a cost per thousand, you know, can run anywhere from you know, as an example, we have a product that we sell for a $40 cost per thousand, but when you want to layer on things like you want um, a specific targeting outside of, you know, one demographic like women 35 plus, then you pay additional money to layer on different targeting. Um, it is, it does not air on YouTube. So, 
Um, it only airs on um, apps that are non-subscription based. So you notice I put a lot of different ones in here. You know, there's a, some of these are not subscription based, so therefore commercials are inserted. The subscription based OTT is your Netflix, is your Disney Plus, um, some of those. So just don't be confused when someone is trying to explain OTT to you and they say, well, it's just like Netflix because you can't buy advertising in Netflix. In fact, Netflix tried a subscription, a non-subscription based product and it really didn't work out for them because people are willing to pay a certain amount of money not to see TV commercials. That really bothers me personally because, you know, but that's the way it works. So that's a that's a good, you know, medium, you know, to know about is this because it is gaining popularity and a lot of people are what we call cord cutters. They've gone away from cable. Um, they only own a smart TV. Um, they may not have an HD um, antenna so that they can get a television signal from their local affiliate. So this is a way to reach people um, that may be cord cutters and your cord cutters tend to be those consumers that are under 35. And um, all the TV groups have that ability to sell that OTT product. Um, so the next product is um, newspaper. So everyone knows what a newspaper is, I, I believe. Um, you know, so this is the definition that I got out of the uh, internet because I really don't, you know, I used to buy newspaper advertising when I worked for the family business um, and it was really quite expensive. It's changed a little bit. And when I was buying advertising, as an example, Portland, Maine had the um, Portland, uh, Portland Press Herald and then they had the Evening Express and they had the Maine Sunday Telegram and there was all kinds of newspapers and that's changed. Um, and you know, there's also your weekly papers, your shoppers. So I've just kind of lumped all of those together. So in the next slide, um, I talk about, you know, the ad space is sold in different sections of the paper. So you can buy in, you know, the lifestyle section or the sports section, or you can just buy in a general section. And they're sold either by a column inch or by pages. And they're often sold on an annual contract. So, you know, back in the day, they used to sell annual contracts and you had to buy, commit to buying a certain amount of advertising and you couldn't get out of them. But that's changed now that newspaper is not as dominant as it once was. Now, the benefit of newspaper is someone can cut out your ad and walk into your business and say, I saw this, I'd like that special. Um, when I was a, a salesperson for television, I used to fight that all the time with car dealers, for example. I'd say, well, you should advertise on TV. And they'd say, well, I get lots of results in the newspaper. People walk in and you know, show me the ad about the car they wanna buy. Um, you know, and I would say, you're right. No one's ever gonna walk in with a, a TV set or a radio and said, I saw or heard of this ad. Um, that being said, I always recommend that when people are going to do an ad in the newspaper, that they make it a coupon, that they make it a bring in. So if you're a restaurant, you know, make it so that if they bring in this ad and they buy a dinner, they get a dessert. Um, or, you know, it's a buy one, get the second one half off, and then you can track how effective it is. So it's a measurable way of doing advertising. So the next um, thing I'm gonna to touch on is the QR code. It's not necessarily advertising, but it can be very important towards your advertising. So it's also known as the quick response code. Now, about three years ago, all of us in television thought QR codes were gone. We were no longer trying to push them to people. We were no longer trying to include them in people's advertising. And then lo and behold, COVID hits. And all of a sudden we need a way for people to see paper without handing them paper. Cause that, you know, we believed um, and no causes germs to pass. So all of a sudden the QR code had a resurgence because we needed them for menus. Um, so, you know, it can link to a specific page on your website 
I actually interviewed someone the other day who left me behind a QR code on a card. I scanned it and it was actually their um, presentation to me as to why they should, I should hire them and gave me their experience. And I just kind of scrolled through their presentation. That all came through a QR code. So it can be very effective. It can drive someone directly to a, a certain part of your website. That's where you can put a um, offer and they can bring it in on their smartphone because er almost everyone has a smartphone today. So, you know, that's a way to use a QR code to bring you back some business. So the next thing I touch on is your website. That is so important. You need a quality website. You know, it's your business calling card. That's what I always tell people. Think of it as your business calling card. When someone goes to that website, they're learning about your business. And that's the thing. People do so much more research today before they ever walk into your business or before they ever call you. You know, they Google you. They want to know about you. They're very curious. Um, and you know what? It can also help with your potential employees when they're looking. Um, you know, when you're hiring, potential employees can go there. So I always tell people, make sure that when someone goes to your website, it's a destination. There's something there for them that is going to cause them to take action. Um, I remember back in 1998, um, every, everyone had to have a website. You just, you just couldn't not have a website. But no one talked about what you needed at the website. So everyone got website addresses, and it just went to like a splash page, and that was it. And there was nothing for people to go to. Um, but I will tell you, when people sit watching TV or listening to a product on the radio, if, as long as they're home, again, we don't want them in the car doing this, um, they often take out their smartphone and they Google your product or they're sitting there with their laptop and they go online and they look at your website. And an interesting thing is, Using Google Analytics, you can actually track how effective your advertising is on TV um, because you can go in and see the spikes in the advertising after your commercials air. Um, so, you know, that's just a really um, an interesting part, one more part about the website. Um, you can also use it for your e-commerce. So I just really always encourage people to use their website as part of their advertising, whether it's radio, TV, newspaper, cable, use that because it will bring people to that site. And if you have something that makes them want to stay or get more information, that's another effective component to your advertising and marketing of your business. So social media. I think everyone recognizes those two ladies. Um, they're with the home edit. Um, they actually built their entire business through Instagram. So it's one of the most cost-effective methods to promote your business, but you need to commit to posting, okay? You can't just throw up an Instagram or a Facebook account and expect that people are going to come and like your page and come back. So you have to engage people, you know, so you have to commit to posting. Um, you know, and the reason that I always, there are companies that will do this for you. And I actually, years ago at another TV station, we used to sell social media um, help to people. But the problem is, is that, you know, we can do the mechanics, but only you know your business intimately to really talk about what it is that it benefits you for. So, um, you know, I can give share two quick stories. There's two businesses in my market. One is a car dealership and he posts every single day, multiple times. And he posts about where he's doing. Every time someone buys a car, he takes a picture of them, posts him and the people shaking hands, et cetera. He's been incredibly successful. He actually has a full-time social media manager that now does his does all of that. And he's got a huge following on Instagram, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn, because they want to know what this car dealer is doing. And he's very community focused. Um, and then 
The other one is a small local um, store that sells gifts and other things. And Kate posts um, two or three times a day. She posts videos of herself either wearing or using the product she has for sale and talks about the sales that she's having. So it can be very effective to building your brand. You know, I, I encourage people to use that in combination with other more traditional media um, because the other more traditional media helps as well. I think they work very well together. So finally, you need an advertising budget because you need a way, if you're a new business, to get your message out to potential customers. If you're an existing business, you need to maintain that presence. And I say this in using the example of McDonald's. McDonald's is a 365 day a year advertiser. There's very few people that don't know who McDonald's is. Um, if you have small children, um, you definitely know who McDonald's is because as soon as the golden arches are within sight, it's let's pull in and get a happy meal. You know, Dunkin' Donuts is another one. Everyone knows Dunkin' Donuts, but they still continue to advertise. Um, and it's just as important to your business as rent and lights and employees. And you really need to set aside money for that and you need to have a budget for it. Now, the average budget is five to 10% of your annual revenue that you should budget um, for TV advertising, or I'm sorry, not TV, any advertising. Um, and, you know, sometimes it can be up to 20%, you know, if you're getting started, um, et cetera, depending on how much you want to drive the business. Now, I've been through a couple of recessions in this business, and we all just came through COVID. And I will tell you, the businesses that maintained their presence during times of uncertainty tend to grow. The car dealer I talked about maintained his television presence every single day, and he never shut down his business. And he was just recently awarded the, one of the top 10 dealers in his product line, you know, and he attributes it to advertising, okay? So, and it wasn't just television, he did radio as well, and he had a social media presence, but again, he continued to advertise. So, you know, that definitely paid off for him. And then um, finally, I'm just going to throw out a couple of media terms that you may hear. Um, and I tried to make it really simple. So run of schedule, that's usually anytime from 4 a.m. to 3.59 a.m. Um, you know, now all, all stations are 24-7. Back in, um, before I was selling advertising and it was probably like the 1970s, TV stations used to sign off, TV and radio stations used to sign off with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner and, you know, sometime about midnight and then they'd sign back on in the morning. Um, but now, you know, you can get news on most TV stations at 4.30 in the morning, your local news. Um, vertical saturation, that's all day coverage on certain days. Um, that can be very effective if you're having a sale. Um, if you're advertising all day in advance of an event, um, you know, so it can be expensive, but it can also be effective. Cost per thousand, that's how many thousands of people you're reaching at a certain dollar amount. Um, and that's the cost per thousand people reach. So, you know, you can hear terms such as it's an $8 cost per thousand or a $10 cost per thousand, depending on the time and the people, et cetera. A demographic, that's the age or the household or the gender of who you want to reach or who you're reaching. Um, ROI, that I think that's one of the most important terms is your return on investment. It's always good for you to know what you would need to get in order to invest money. And it's, you're not spending money on advertising, you're investing it. So what would you need to get back? How many new customers would you need? How much would you need to sell? Um, by spending that. Um, broad rotators, that's a time period that usually encompasses three to five hours. And column inch is, is the way newspaper advertising is sold. And that is all. So I just wanted to uh, thank everyone. And now I can answer any questions that, that have arrived, Kelsey. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eileen. Uh, that was very extensive. <laughs> 
and it all made a lot of sense to me. So it seems like people were responding and they had some good questions along the way. Um, I was trying to find, there was a couple early questions. Some of them may or may not be totally on topic, but someone was asking uh, if you had any ideas about podcasts or is that considered a media at this point? It is, it is, it is actually considered a media. Um, you know, radio stations, TV um, stations, we have podcasts. Um, we, we sell advertising around the podcast. Um, you know, it's a very specific genre. Um, and then there's people that have their own podcasts. I actually, my sister can tell you, I'm a huge fan of podcasts. I, I listen to them every day. I was listening to one this morning. And, um, you know, you can buy advertising in and around certain podcasts. I actually don't know how um, that works, uh, but if that's something that interests you, ask your local radio or TV station about podcast advertising um, because they typically have podcast advertising that they sell. Awesome. Um, and then much earlier when we were talking about kind of some of the uh, price breakdowns for like TV stations, this question came in, might not be just about that, but um, Donna was asking, are there any specific small business pricing programs for these outlets? Do they cater? To Many stuff? of them do. Okay. It really, I will tell you, um, new business is the driver of all business. Um, our company and every other TV company and radio company that I know of and cable company and newspapers even are always looking for new business and they want to introduce people to advertising. So in some cases, they will offer a special package. It's an incentive. It's usually a, a three to six month package. Sometimes it can be an annual package. It's a certain cost per month. It includes a certain amount of commercials in different day parts, and it includes production of a commercial. Now, typically TV stations, if we give you something for free, you are now our new best friend and we hold it hostage. So you can only use it on our medium because we gave it to you for free. However you pay for it, I'm more than happy to let you use it anyplace else. So uh, that's always something to consider when you're gonna do advertising. But if you're just starting on TV, go ahead and take them up on that offer. And radio is the same thing. If you want to do radio with them, sometimes they'll do two or three commercials, the same with cable, but they want it to stay with them. And once you want to leave them, you want to break up with them, they want some money for it. But they're happy to, once you pay them, to, to release it. But we want to keep a customer for life and help you grow your business. So That's great. Um, yeah, now I'm having flashbacks to these like radio advertisements last year that were like, please advertise on our radio station. Like we'll give you whatever it was. It was very reasonably priced, it seemed to me as a, you know, right. backseat yeah. driver, quite literally. But um, yeah. uh, awesome. Okay, that's helpful. Um, and then one thing that came up and I see Kay's hand is raised, so she might have more to say, but we were just kind of discussing press releases and kind of the differences. So could you speak a little bit to what it's? Sure. So um, every TV and radio station and, you know, the difference, and this is where cable differentiates and, and newspaper, you know, newspaper, not so much, but cable for sure. And that is, you know, cable doesn't have an outlet locally to put news on. So your TV and radio stations usually have their own news outlets. And so they're always looking for content, okay? My station, you know, we broadcast four and a half hours in the morning and we broadcast an hour at noontime and we broadcast two and a half hours in the evening and then we broadcast another half hour at night after. So we're always looking to have content. But it's important because when you want to get on TV or radio or you want to be featured in the newspaper, you need to present yourself as the expert. You need to present something compelling to them. So, you know, if you look at um, 
different things that are happening. Um, let's say, you know, the price of jet fuel is causing airline tickets to go through the roof and you're a travel agent and you have great suggestions on how people save money, certainly pitch yourself as the expert and let TV and radio stations and newspapers know that you're the expert in certain areas because they keep a list of people that they can go to when they find that they wanna cover a story on a local level. So a lot of times local stories are initiated because something on a national level is happening. We wanna know locally what's happening and therefore that's what happens there. That's how you get that kind of coverage. Um, you know, and continue to send in press releases. And if you are doing, and this is one thing I always tell people, people say, well, I spend so much money advertising with your station. How come I'm not on TV? Like, I want to be on the news. And I say, you know what? News and sales, it's like church and state, but really separate. Um, I'm happy to walk your press release down to my news director. I have zero influence. I really do. And I always encourage people to understand that. Um, but if you have something compelling um, of interest, oftentimes you can get coverage, you know? And the other thing too is I have no control because sometimes they won't go to one of my advertisers. They'll go to someone who's already presented themselves as an expert. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and yeah thank you. To... Yeah, well, thank yeah. you very much. Eileen, thank you for the session itself too. Um, this is great. Um, so I have two follow-up questions. Um, there is one about the, you know, how we get the marketing inserts for mail as much in the postal service, as much as we hate. There is right. still an influence, uh, but I couldn't figure out what the ROI would be. And, you know, generally, is that an effective medium? And then finally, um, the third is around like blogs. For example, in the food industry, um, we have in Massachusetts, like Edible Boston and these type of magazines. Uh, where do they come in place? Thank you. Okay. Um, so the first one, the direct mail inserts, those... Um, those are very intrusive in people's homes, but sometimes people see it because it comes in a package um, and they just put it right in the garbage, you know, they just, and sometimes people are like me and they're curious as to what's in it and they'll go through it and leave through it. So um, the thing about direct mail is it can be very expensive because there can be a lot of waste to it, but I'm not saying it can't be effective if you have an offer. It's so important, just like um, you know, newspaper advertising with direct mail, please put an offer in it so that it brings someone back to your business. Um, so that, you know, I hope I answered that question for you, but they can be very targeted. You know, um, as an example, I oftentimes get direct mail about retirement because they know that I am over 60 um, and need and need retirement planning. So there obviously it can be targeted. So I would say, depending on what you want to do, that would be that. And then for your question about blogs, or I always recommend that if you are creating a blog and posting on a blog, that you somehow promote that blog, you know, because that's where you're the expert. You know, there's a lot of lifestyle content where people post. Um, and they gain followers. And so one of the ways to do it is to obviously get people that you know to follow you and recommend your blog and talk about it. And um, that's another way to promote yourself and your business. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick follow-up on the uh, inserts. And you, talk, you actually reminded me about the targeting. It's interesting where... Um, you know, I'm one of you, like I would just go through quickly before putting in trash, but it's very targeted in the sense there was a Indian store that opened in Wuburn, you know, much mm -hmm. farther away where I live, but I was targeted. And then there was, oh, we are opening this supermarket in Wuburn. Like I, that keeps happening. So where do they find our data? Like who gives them that I'm Indian and then I'm residing? And <laughs> it's very interesting because obviously, um, you know, they have um, various ways just because sometimes you might opt into something and identify 
um, you know, like on a website or something like that. If you want to opt in for certain contact, you might identify that you're a woman and that you're between a certain age and you make a certain income and those things get sold, you know? Um, and so that's how they're able to target it. So if there's a way for you to target someone effectively um, by purchasing that information, so that kind of targeting costs more than just sticking something in a direct mail envelope because you've actually bought some information. It's the same type of targeting that happens with OTT advertising because they um, have all kinds of creepy information about you. Um, unfortunately, this device here is a big, you know, proponent of giving all kinds of information um, about people and their IP addresses, et cetera. Yep. Thank you. You're Which welcome. Is both terrifying and also you as business owners are able to buy those lists and you can target those people just as creepily as they can target you. So, you know, it's pros and cons. Uh, we're all yeah, I wondered, I wondered if it's like the credit cards or I wonder where, you know, I, I understand it. It's a combination of everything. You know, um, all of these things, like I said, I worked for, I've worked for two different companies in their television division that also own newspapers. I mean, also in magazines. And as a result of that, they had a lot of data on people that we sold, not necessarily pay your personal data, but generic data that we sold to be able to target people. So we could say we can reach these people because we do all kinds of matchback targeting. I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole other webinar on how that targeting works. So all right. Definitely. And and make sure that when you are looking into that, that you are you know, it happens a lot where I'm getting targeted with like fiber arts in Portland, Oregon. It's like, yeah, I do want to go to that store, but I live in Portland, Maine. So make sure that when you are choosing your targets, you are specific as well. Um, That's a really good point. <laughs> um, so there were a couple of other questions. Oh yeah. So Jeffrey's saying that it comes from like census data and website cookies and tracking and Amazon and Facebook and all those places. So they're really, I mean, the world is working really hard to gather your information. So right. they- yep. Thank you, Jeffrey. It is a lot of those yeah. combinations. Um, a couple other things came up. So if anybody else has any questions, go ahead and stick them in there. Um, I know that you're not main based, but maybe Chris could comment. Uh, Maliko is asking, do you have any magazine advertising pointers? So Down East Magazine and Portland Magazines are ones that seem to be popular in our area and are distributed nas nationwide. So uh, I guess... Do you have any advertising? Sure. So, I mean, the thing is, is that you can um, call these different, you know, magazines, ask for an advertising um, presentation. Um, sometimes that now with now with what we've learned by being able to do a Zoom or um, a Teams meeting, we can actually um, do a virtual uh, meeting with you. We can show you a presentation. We can talk about it. Um, you know, with those magazines, um, they're glossy, they reach a certain target, um, they tend to be expensive, but if that's what you want to reach, um, you know, if there's a certain type of person you want to reach, those can be incredibly effective. Um, and again, it's just how much do you want to invest to get that return and is it hitting your target audience? And just as a plug for the main SBDC, we can really help with your market like research and finding out who your target audience is. So if uh, you don't know, we could certainly help with that. And that might help you narrow down TV versus magazine versus which magazine um, from there. So, all right, Malika's saying yes. If there's anything else, feel free to mention that. And then there was- Malika, kind of a, go ahead. I just wanted to jump in for a second. Um, so I did want to say like um, Down East Magazine as compared to Portland Magazine. So Down East Magazine is read all the way down to Florida, right up the Eastern seaboard. So if your business, you know, attracts a lot of tourists or is, you know, really, if you count on the tourist business, 
that would be a good investment. Um, and Portland Magazine is more local, you know, it, certainly it does attract tourists too, but Down East Magazine is very costly. Um, but I can tell you, if you get featured in Down East Magazine, you have incredible business. Um, back in 2008, my restaurant was featured in Down East Magazine as one of the top 50 eateries to check out in Maine. And that summer, we were in North Yarmouth, that summer, our parking lot, every license plate was out of state, except for the people that worked for me, right? So, um, and it continued, people would walk in with the Down East Magazine magazine and say, hey, I'm, I, I met people that were checking out every single restaurant in that magazine. Um, so these people are really a high income demographic. Um, and so if you have a product that, you know, that's your demographic, then it's certainly worth advertising in a magazine like that. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Our, our particular product is Needham's, which is extremely a, a main centric thing and does uh, resonate with, with the tourists and, and some of our snowbirds. Uh, so just kind of wanted to you know, bring that up that, that while I definitely you know, hear that your know, magazine isn't necessarily always the best way to go, that that uh, it can be beneficial in in some in some businesses. Right. By the way, I love your product. Um, my Thank sister you. Does this every year, so <laughs> uh, it's one of my favorite things. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm a fan too. I got some my dad's <laughs> for Christmas too. <laughs> um. Okay, so there were two. So Donna was saying uh, all the advertising options seem extremely expensive. One newspaper quoted ten thousand dollars for six months. Magazines are over eight hundred dollars an issue. Everything seems to be thousands of dollars. Is that accurate? You know, it really it really depends, and it depends on what you're. You know, I, you have to be honest when you're talking with an advertising account executive and these people uh, want to work to earn your business and they have a lot of information, you know, our company and almost every company out there that, you know, sells advertising, you know, we spend a lot of money subscribing to different information and, and things like that. And so if you tell me that your budget is, you know, $10,000 for the entire year to do advertising, I'm not going to suggest a $10,000, you know, something. I'm going to suggest, here's what I can do for you. Let's pick, you know, the busiest months or where you want to bring people. Um, anyone is really going to suggest, you know, something like that. And um, I just saw that Jeffrey popped in, um, you know, TV and radio stations also have websites. And we sell advertising on our website. And that can be a very affordable place to start because you're part of a tr trusted brand where people are coming for news and information and then they see your advertisement there, you know, on the website. And it kind of gives you some additional credibility. And it's a very low cost per thousand for impressions. Um, and so that's a, that's a really good point. So, yep, that's a good point to start with, but again, be honest about what you have to spend and people, you know, should be able to come back with a, a good presentation. Um, I, as I said, I know that, you know, we have packages as low as $800 a month. You know, we expect people to make, um, a three to six month commitment because it takes time for people to see your advertisement. They're not going to see your advertisement one time and take action. I mean, that occurred, you know, I think one of the breakfast companies did that in the Super Bowl. And the next day they were so overwhelmed with the amount of people that came in. You know, it was unbelievable, but it was an unbelievable offer, like free breakfast. OK, so unless you're prepared to make an unbelievable offer, <laughs> you really need to build up some um, time with people, whether it's radio, TV, newspaper. That makes sense. And really what I've heard you say a bunch of times is like it doesn't hurt to ask. And so reaching mm -hmm. out to any platform that you are interested in advertising on and asking a couple questions seeing what they can present is probably a great way to start because um, you can only. Right. The follow-up thing I was going to say is that um, 
a lot of times radio and um, TV companies will offer like a, they'll promote a free web, you know, free seminar, learn about the best advertising. You know what? They're, they're trying to gain new customers. They're going to give you some information, but they're also going to present you with an opportunity to advertise with them um, and usually at discounted rates. So take advantage of those things because if you learn just one thing from that, it's worth your time and you may even get some advertising. And I know my sister um, advertised on TV as a small business. Um, and, you know, I, I, people would ask me, well, how do I get your sister to advertise with me? And I'd be like, I, I think you need to talk to her. Like, I have no call. But anyhow, go on, Chris. I know you wanted to share your quick thing about well, your advertising. Right. I was just going to say, Donna, I don't know where you are in your um, journey as far as your business goes at what stage you're at. Um, but as I said before, I owned a restaurant in North Yarmouth. And when I first started there, um, the shopping notes still existed. I'm very sad it doesn't anymore if anybody lives in the Cumberland Yarmouth area. Um, but we started with a commitment to do an ad every single week in the notes and I and always change the ad. So the notes was a weekly paper um, and we would change our ad every week. Um, and we would notice that people would come in, you know, because of the ad. And then we decided to expand to the forecaster, you know, like we wanted to get the Falmouth area, uh, see if we can draw some clients there. So one little tip and trick that our father taught us actually <laughs> in advertising, right? We, when my sister says put an offer in print, it's true. So I would maybe advertise like, um, you know, a free muffin or, or coffee or something like that, or, you know, a reduced price on something but you'd have to bring the ad in. And what I would do is in the notes, in the corner, you know, I would just put, you know, SN, shopping notes. And in the forecaster, I would just put FC, forecaster, right? So then, and this is old fashioned SEO, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, people would bring in the coupon, right? right? And then I would compare and I would do this for weeks at a time. Well, eventually, and no offense to the forecaster, but I dropped the forecaster because it wasn't hitting my market, but I was always getting people from the notes, right? So that's how I figured out, okay, that's a good outlet for me. And then eventually, you know, people wanted me to advertise on their website and, you know, do social media platform things. Um, and then my journey led me to a local television station who was excellent. And they came in, they did a video for us for the advertising. Um, they made a couple different videos and then they said, hey, we're going to do bookends for you. So in, I, I didn't go into bookends, but it's basically you know, your ad scene, and then, you know, there's something in between, and then your ad scene again, right? It's like 15 seconds on each side. Um, and that was incredibly effective. And the package was, of course, this was, well, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now, the package was a little bit less than what Eileen's saying, but not that much less. It was about $700 a month. And I committed to a year and I just continued to commit because it was like, okay, that was worth my while. Um, so you can build up to advertising for sure. Yeah. So we, there's no free local, um, like free paper. It's just the actual pay to play big time paper. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, so we opened a cafe in Waterville and I was trying to get quotes on the local paper, which Sentinel, and it just seemed extremely expensive for the smallest little doodad area of the newspaper. Um, and so I was just trying to brainstorm ideas on, is it really that expensive? <laughs> because it just seemed... It really can be really, it can be really that expensive still. You know, unfortunately, the newspapers, even though they're continuing to decline in subscriptions and circulation. Um, their pricing hasn't declined. The number of pages has declined. Um, you know, you can, I, you know, Waterville, you know, you've kind of got options to either advertise in the Bangor market or the Portland market if you want to look at TV. Um, or, you know, there is radio in the Waterville market, you might want to give that a try because that can be very effective. It really yeah, can. The radio wanted like a thousand dollars a month too. So it just seemed like everyone was pricey. 
Right. Well, you know what? You might want to ask the radio station, do you ever have any opportunities, um, you know, for new businesses or for, you know, for someone that's never been on yeah. your, your airwaves? Um, and I know there's more than one radio group in your market. So I would call the different radio groups and ask to speak with someone about advertising. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that was shocking is how expensive NPR is. Yes. Well, that's, that's and here's the reason why, because you're not really buying advertising, you're buying an endorsement. So it's basically you are um, sponsoring a program, you know, and so that tends to be um, more expensive. It doesn't really, it's not really your message. It's this program is brought to you in part by Donna, you know, and not necessarily anything about you. So um, actually, I use that as a great lead generator for my team. I listen to NPR and I'm like writing it down and, you know, because radio or TV can really talk about what you want to talk about and it aligns with what you want to align with. And I recognize you may want to align with NPR, um, but it may not be cost effective for you to do that. So again, I would reach out to the radio stations. I reach out to all of them and I'd ask to speak with the sales manager and tell them, you know, you're a small business, you'd like to do some advertising. Can someone contact you with information? And one last quick follow-up question. So if you have different channels of your business and you had talked about a percentage of your overall sales, should you break that down by your channel and percentage of sales advertising budget by channel? So for example, like if you're, if you have a consumer facing part of your business and a non-consumer facing part, your advertising budget would be broken down by channel. Well, I mean, if you're, um, if you're, I don't know how you gain your non-consumer. Um, you know, my budgeting recommendation is always for the consumer to bring people in. So, you know, that's where, you know, I would say that. But um, if you're talking business to business, um, which is your, you know, non, then you might want to look at what your what it costs to acquire customers, you know, and and budget for that on that side. And then what, what you want to spend on the other side to acquire customers. But sometimes your advertising can be both. You know, you can advertise and kind of hit both people with that advertisement, um, you know, as far as that goes. But I know Chris can speak more to that because she's had the, you know, consumer and she's also had the B2B side of her business. Right. Uh, so Donna, what, what do you do? What is your business? Oh, sorry. I, I should clarify. I'm actually Kate. <laughs> oh, Donna, okay. Donna is my mother and she was on earlier. Um, and then I jumped on. Um, so we, okay. own... <laughs> um, sorry, that's okay. I, uh, I, you can't put two names on the zoom. Right. Um, we own Bixby chocolate, which is a, okay. Um, chocolate manufacturing company, but we now also have a cafe in Waterville that's like a chocolate cafe, um, which is our new like consumer facing business. We predominantly sell DTC and into grocery ch channel, um, but I was trying to figure out a way to market the cafe affordably, <laughs> quote affordably, um, and it it just seemed really shocking how expensive it was, or I had sticker shock. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So um, it is difficult, like you said, because you there's not like a, you know, a free local paper, um, you know, that's weekly. Um, and then you're looking at, what is it? Waterville Sentinel? Is it Sentinel? Yeah, it's the Sentinel. Um, and it was just $10,000 for six months for the smallest little yeah. <laughs> thing. Right. Yeah. So I, I actually... You know, in that case, I, like just to reiterate what my sister said, I th I think I would go for for radio really, um, because I can't believe that they don't have less expensive packages. Because as Kelsey said, it, it, you know, like oh, just about a year ago, they were aver the radio stations were advertising like we'll create your ad, we'll do this, we'll do that, you know, and they still need revenue. I mean, everybody is kind of being hit at the same time. Um, so, and for your B2B, it sounds like you already have that locked up what you do, right? Selling. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just was trying to figure out like when you're when you have these different channels, but it, you know, advertising is one of those things that you really can't track. You could try to track it, but it's a little bit like shotgun approach where, you know, obviously we see that advertising works. You just don't know. Sometimes it comes in sideways or, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to be like, this came exactly from this effort, this tactic. Um, right. Unless you have people mention it, like, and you can still, I still hear that on the radio, you know, people like in their ad, they'll say, you know, if you come in, like in your case, you know, if you come into our, our store, you know, and you mention, mention this ad, we'll give you like a little chocolate gift box or whatever, yeah. you know, um, if you really want to know if that's effective, like, and like I said about how I would track, which is something our dad taught us about print media, which back in the seventies and eighties, when, you know, he was really in early nineties, really going strong in his business, print media was the way to go and television advertising. And believe it or not, it was way more expensive back when he was doing television advertising than it is now, um, you'd have to pay for production time and everything else. But now you can have a television station come in, they'll do all the production and, and it will just, it will be better than anything you could ever pay for yourself, right? But the thing is, is you just like in my case, when I talked about what I did for $700 a month, but I had to, you know, was they own the ad, all right? So I couldn't just take this nice video production and go to another um, television station, Right. They right. own the ad, and um, but it was a high quality production, so that might right. be something. The only TV option I think is WABI TV. Yeah, Adam. they can. You know, again, I this is what I would do is I would call them, and you know, just say I am interested in advertising. You know, can I get information? Can someone and they they offer. Look, there, every TV station in America, I have worked for just about every company that owns TV stations in America. They keep getting smaller and buying each other. So I, there's a, the company I work for now, I worked for two other companies that they bought in the last couple of years. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's constantly getting smaller. With that being said, every single one of them wants new business and they want to grow and develop business. And new business is the lifeblood of our business. You know, we have the existing, you know, 365 advertisers, but all of my salespeople, they are charged with bringing in new advertising revenue for new businesses. And they'll work really hard for you because they have budgets to achieve, okay? So I, I say, give them a call, see what they can do for you. You know, it is, it's, I'm sure they'd be happy to meet with you virtually uh, or come down and see you. Um, I know that particular station has a sales force in the Waterville area. Um, that's one of the stations that my, you know, our dad used to do business with. So I met with them. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, every, I would not, Can you join us? but I would, Sorry about that. Um, but I would definitely reach out to TV stations. They want to earn your business. Give them a shot at it. Okay. So make them do some work. Tell them Thank I said you. so. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I hope that answered your question. We got lots of thanks. Uh, I'm trying to read this last comment. Lynn said, thanks. It sounds like most traditional advertising options are out of reach for small business budgets. We need to get more committed to our social media. So yeah, so social media advertising is another avenue that we touched on a little bit. Um, we do have a couple of webinars on our YouTube channel about uh, social media advertising. So we can help with that. If you are not set up with a main SBDC business advisor, we highly, highly recommend it. We provide confidential, no cost advising. Um, so there'll be a very easy link to click in my follow-up email to get you set up with an advisor. Uh, but I think, I think we hit all of the questions. So thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Chris, for facilitating all of this. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, this was great. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with everyone. I wish you all much success. Um, and again, you know, if you want a great social media example, I mean, 
follow the home edit on Instagram. You know, they have just killed it. They got books, they got, you know, TV, uh, Netflix series, you know, they're interviewed on the regular. Um, So, you know, and those are two women that built their business um, by using Instagram and got tons of followers. So, you know what, you know your business better than anyone. Start building your business through social media and hopefully it grows so much you can use the traditional media and grow it some more. So, exactly. have a great day, everyone. And we would <laughs> never turn down chocolate. Clear. <laughs> oh, chocolate. Absolutely. <laughs> as long chocolate. as it's gluten-free, she's good. Oh, yes, chocolate typically true. is. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, yeah, unfortunately so. have celiac disease. So I have to be very careful about what I eat. So, um, but thank you everyone. And um, I, I don't typically work for chocolate, but I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.